Hello everyone and welcome back. This week's episode is about a pro feature for Lychee Slicer and it was introduced in version 5.2. The feature is called Support Projection and it is just that. It gives you a preview projection of what the supports that you might be creating through the auto feature are going to create. And it's a little bit different than your, you know, your typical auto feature. And we'll get into the uh, details of that in just a second. Now I'm going to speed through the process of doing this, but I'm also going to explain to you what exactly the feature is and how it kind of works the different ways to do it we're going to show you one method of doing it and then i'm going to show you a different method that i played around with as well and um we're still toying around to see which one gives us the best results but for the most part um it does seem to work uh very well actually and it does seem to save time so stay tuned we're going to show you more in just a sec now, normally, you would just go to your Prepare tab, start supporting your base, and blah, blah. And this is under the Auto tab, so you're going to go to Auto, and then you're going to go Start Support Projection. Then you're going to go over to the Sphere, which is one of the easier ways to do it. You can also use the Surface, I believe it's Crease and Surface Angle are the terms they use. And those work a little differently and allow you to paint the supports on a little different, or the area of supports um, to be interpreted a little bit differently. Now this kind of works like support painting in the fact that you're just kind of freehanding where the supports are going to go, but it is not like support painting in the looseness of the way the supports can land. This will create a uniform body of supports for you in several different ways. You have a single border, double border, you can do it at multiple different interval uh, in offset levels as well as interval levels. So you have the options to be able to make it do and be as dense or as non-dense as you want it to be. Now in the, case, in the case of something like this, where it's a semi hollowed out base, it's about 1.8 millimeters density thickness in material. It's got a couple of points where it's gonna be a little heavy and have some suction. But other than that, I'm not going to use anything tougher than a light support. Uh, I've done tons of shapes like this, so I know that that should work just fine. Now, I'm going to try and paint as much as I can on the bottom without painting on the top because I want to limit the confusion that that might cause the program when it's trying to interpret where it actually wants to put these supports. Anyway, I'm going to let this go ahead and, and just finish through the rest of this. Um, and uh, we'll explain a little bit more as we come back here after I'm done painting. All right, once you're done applying your paint work, you want to go ahead and do the preview and that's going to bring you to the next step now if you click cancel from here so far it's just booted me back out completely and i have to start over it's a little bit annoying it's kind of cumbersome but i think they'll address that eventually like i said you have an option of global border and infill now infill does not mean hollow infill that means what's filled in inside of the border you have a border section which is the outer edge of your supporting which you can have a single or a double, which can actually be different than what your actual fill is on your supporting if you want to be a little bit offset there even more. So you do have a variety of what you can do and the supporting uh, will look very concise and well done. You might have some clustered areas where it's a little thick, but for the most part, you can then just go in and just edit and, and do what you need to there. Uh, like this, for example, I feel like maybe this is a bit much, but I also feel like it might be enough because it is a, it's, a, it's a decently sized print. It does have some heavy spots. Um, I actually think this would be okay. I don't think it's going to damage anything where it matters. It is a lot of supports, though, and we still need to fill in the areas that have missed. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we'll be right back. All right, we filled in those empty spots and we've done some island searching. So now we're taking a look at the islands and we've got about, I don't know, maybe half a dozen 
not too bad. Um, probably going to put some extra supporting around the front end of the bun there um, just to make sure that it has enough uh, support on its initial couple of uh, support connections. Uh, the reason I do that so much on the bases is because I really feel like the first couple of layers matter so much to the rest of the shape of the base um, that it is just so mega important to make sure that you get good connection there with your supports. And I know it looks dense and stuff like that, but um, trust me, it, it can be denser and you'll be just fine even with a hollow piece like this. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and finish this. We'll finish the islands. We'll go through this one. And I'm going to show you um, how the other method that I was talking about when you do the different types uh, versus, you know, the infill and the um, off, uh, the sorry, the border and the infill versus just doing uh, one size globally, uh, which is what we did for this one. So it will give you a slightly different result. And, you'll, and we're going to show you guys that. So um, we're going to speed through the rest of this. Uh, if you want to watch it, if you don't, just skip forward. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it really just doesn't take much longer. All right, so on to the other way to do it. Like I said before, when you do this, you can choose to use a global setting or you can choose to use both uh, border settings and uh, infill settings to be a little different. So just to save time and because I'm just going to be completely lazy on this one, I'm going to use the big, <laughs> big radius tool. Uh, I'm going to bring it back down to, I think, 10. I think I was using like a 2 or a really smaller one before. But anyway, this just should take a little less time. I'm going to speed this up again anyway, and then I'm going to show you what the results are. All right, uh, like I said, it didn't take very long this time. So as we look at the projection, we can see that this is pretty much the same there for at first. Now I'm going to start adjusting. So we're going to change that to concentric. We're going to change this down below here, the interval level. We're going to change the offset level. Then we're going to go over to the border section and we're going to start messing with each one individually. I just wanted to set a primary um, starting point. And you'll see what I mean here in just a sec. So there we go to border. We're going to change that to 1.2. Then we're going to go to our interval. We're going to change that. 1.4 then we'll go down here to our offset and we're going to change that to a 2 sorry 2.2 my bad I'm reading my notes like 2.2 okay good job <laughs> Now on this one, we went ahead and just produced that. Now I know it still missed that back part, but as you notice, far less dense. There's some clustering in the front there where the ridging and the base kind of meet that little lip area. But this is okay. I actually think that's a good spot for there to be a little extra support. I think that's going to help because of the curvature of this piece. I think it's going to create some interesting peel force. Um, go ahead and do the island stuff like we usually do. Again, I'm going to speed through this because that's boring. All right, with that, this piece is pretty much done. I mean, it's gonna use a couple extra supports there in the front, probably do a couple extra checks around the back, 
definitely will need to do a proximity check and a layer by layer check to make sure I didn't miss any little thing. However, I will note that the projection system is, although a little bit, seems a little unfinished just in the fact that every time I would apply something or look at a certain way I painted something, it, it, if I canceled it or something, it just kind of kicked me back out. Um, would also be nice to see um, a different shape tool for the uh, painting process and maybe a way to erase the painting. I didn't find a way to do that unless I just didn't see the key and I'm just missing it. So anyway, other than that, it seems like it's a pretty neat tool for the pro users. Um, for those of you that aren't pro, I know we don't all have the cash. I get it. I do understand that. So um, I fully get it. If you can afford the couple bucks a month, these features truly are becoming worth it. Uh, and I'm going to cover a couple more of them. We'll probably go over this one a few more times in some of our other episodes. We'll probably include it as well. Anyway, hope you guys liked this episode. And if you did, please leave us a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It truly helps us more than anything else. And I hope to see you all next time. Uh, please, again, if you want to know more uh, about episodes when they get released, also don't forget to ring the bell. That is a big helper for you. All right, see you all soon.